I'm here with the bike of Steve Cummings of Team Dimension Data. This is his Cervelo S5. It's about my size. Let's take a closer look at it. So Cummings himself, he stands at one meter 90, which in old money is well, six foot three, there or thereabouts. He's opted for a size 56 centimeter frame. So if you're looking out for one of these bikes, when you're the same sort of height as Steve, you know which size to go for. Now, interestingly, Steve has got a different colored bike to the rest of his teammates. Most of them have got that green color of dimension data on the frame, whereas Steve, well, he's got himself a matte black with some red details on there. So he's a lucky lad, isn't he? Let's face it. Let's look though at what's been fitted onto the frame. Fitted into the frame is this specific model Cervelo seat post, which if you look, does have this quite fancy little cutaway bit here, which I'm led to believe does offer just a little bit of dampening as you ride along, just to take a little bit of the road buzz out, because obviously it is an aerodynamic frame that it's fitted into, which traditionally are a little bit stiffer, of course, too. Uh, and then if you look actually on the top of the actual seat post itself, you can see the really neat carbon fiber that hasn't been painted. I do like a bit of carbon fiber. And then mounted onto that is one of these astute carbon fiber railed saddles. So it's shorter, or at least just a margin anyway, than a traditional saddle, as well as being cut away in the middle. And also it's got this kind of plasticky mesh in there too. So if it's raining, you are gonna get a bit of a wet backside, but hey, What's a wet backside? Moving forward then to the actual cockpit area. Well, we've got an NV carbon fiber stem, which measures 14 and a half centimeters long. So Steve has actually sized down slightly because in the past he was using a 15 centimeter stem, an absolute whopper, I'm sure you'll agree. Interestingly though, inside of these stems are actually some shims that can both alter the angle of the stem as well as the length slightly. So up to two and a half millimeters either way in length. I reckon he's probably up to about 147.5 knowing Steve. Handlebars, well we've got some aerodynamic handlebars which measure 38 centimeters across the top and then on the bottom they actually measure up to 42 so they are pretty flared out and they are shod with this joystick handlebar tape which gives a real nice cushioned effect and a great feel too. Interestingly, they've wrapped almost to the center of the handlebars too which for an aerodynamic pair of handlebars it's kind of unusual really because you tend to see them just wrapped just past the actual brake levers themselves. Talking about brake levers, well these brake levers and gear lever combined are the Shimano Dura Ace 9150 model and then Steve he's actually had them wound right in. When I say wound right in I mean the reach adjust so as you can see they are so so close to the actual handlebar when you pull them on and they're almost touching the bar before they touch the rim. They're fitted to the underside of the stem. We've got the DI2 junction box, and then the wire which comes out of that and goes into the actual top tube of the bike is really neatly spirally wrapped alongside the brake cable, just keeping that, well, basically both cables out of harm's way. Braking, that's provided by Shimano Jaw Ace and the 9100 model calipers. And those brakes, they're stopping a pair of these NV 3.4 wheels. Tubular, of course, and shot on top of those rims is a pair of the Continental Competition Pro Limited tires, which come in a 25 millimeter width. Now these tires, they're actually fitted with a latex inner tube. So just saving a little bit of weight there, obviously requiring inflating daily. Uh, now, interestingly, he's got a pretty long valve extender on the rear wheel you can see here so it's certainly a bit longer than normal held in place of course with a little bit of tape because once those valves start to rattle if they do in fact it can be pretty irritating what about though the middle of the wheels the hubs yep they're the chris king r45s and i know many of you are out there salivating at the thought of hearing that free hub sound you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer though gearing well that's shimano dual race again so it's the 9150 di2 derailleurs both front and rear and cassette wise this is quite interesting or at least certainly for me and i reckon you're gonna love it too shimano ortega cassette 1130 and that's paired up with a pair of 53 36 chain rings from rota check out that one carbon fiber Love a bit of carbon fiber, absolutely love a carbon fiber chain ring. Can't go wrong with that in my opinion. That's mounted to a pair of the Rotor Twin Power power cranks. So of course they are a power meter in there and they come in a length of 172.5 millimeters and then shod on there is a pair of Shimano Dura Ace SPDSL and they're the 9100 version. 
And I'm not gonna leave it just there, oh no, because check out that chain. I love a gold chain. This is the KMC X11 Superlight. So both the pins, so the rivets basically of the chain, as well as the side plates, they're all slotted just to save a little bit of extra weight. So you're gonna save probably between 10, 15 grams against the Durace chain, probably even more, who knows? But that looks absolutely brilliant. I love a gold chain. What about the finishing touches then? Well, we've got a race number holder from BBB, which is mounted onto the seat post, held in place with some very strong bits of rubber band. And then we've also got where the handlebars meet the stem, a couple of markings there and a bit of white paint to actually allow the mechanics to know exactly where they're fitted, should they need to remove them. The same goes here on the saddle rails too. We've also got some Elite Vico Carbon bottle cages on here. And then of course, no pro bike is complete without the rider's name on there too. So there's Steve's name. Then also, I reckon we've got some ceramic bearings in here because check this out. That's pretty unusual. Bikes don't normally spin quite so freely. What about that free hub then? Let's have a listen. What about the measurements then? Well, from the tip of the saddle to the center of the bottom bracket, we're looking at 80 centimeters. So it's just half a centimeter too big for me. Then the tip of the saddle to the center of the bars, 61. And the drop from the saddle to the stem, that's 12 centimeters. So the weight of the bike, it comes in at 7.4 kilos. Right, I do hope you've enjoyed this look at the bike of Steve Cummings. I've known him probably half my life now, and I told him that one day I'd get my grubby little hands on his bike. So there we are. Now remember to like and share this video with your friends too. Give it a big thumbs up. Also remember to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And now for another great video, this time another pro bike, click just down here.